All right, everyone, by popular demand, we are going to be um, doing a quick little face lesson. So I'm at home right now, so it might be a little bit different than our normal type lessons, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. So since a lot of you missed out on our meeting yesterday, um, but are interested in learning how to do faces, I'm gonna be showing you some like very basic steps for how to draw different kinds of faces. So these, when we do them, they're not gonna look like a normal person would look because we're just doing a very bare idea of these faces. So the first time you do it, it's gonna look really weird and like an alien. And the important thing to remember is the kinds of steps that we take to drawing the face, not necessarily how it looks in the end. Because when you are looking at another character or another person, whether you're doing something realistic or a cartoon, it's going to look different than how we're doing it now. So here are the basic steps for being able to do a face. You're gonna start off with a very light outline of a head. You want to think of it kind of like you are drawing almost like an egg. Let's get a little better there. Now everyone's head's going to be a little bit different. So again, do this lightly. We're going to be making changes as we go. You're probably going to be holding your pencil in the middle for a lot of this. You want to start off with, when you're doing a facing forward face, do a line down the middle and a line across the middle. So you've pretty much split the face kind of in half both ways. Camera, you're gonna to need to work with me. This is why I'm not working with my camera at school, so it's a little bit fuzzy. Let's see if I can get it to focus better. There we go. Can't go too close, sorry. The most common mistake that I'll see people making when they're drawing faces is they think that because the nose is the center of our face, therefore it has to be the center of our head. So they'll put the nose right like in the middle, the eyes up high, and then the mouth usually kind of floating in around there. And that's, that's not accurate at all. I think you guys could look at that and say, yeah, that's not quite right. So instead, you have to keep this in mind. Your nose is not the middle of your head. It might be the middle of your face if you're thinking eyes, nose, mouth. But when it comes to your entire head, including your forehead and the top of your head where you see your hair, your eyes are what are in the middle. So this line right here is going to be the guideline for where your eyes are going to go. Now the trick is to make sure you don't make these too small. It seems like that's the most common mistake is people make their eyes pretty small compared to the rest of their head. Kind of football shaped. Little circle on the inside. Little circle inside that. We're starting to get to an eye. We're not worried too much about the great details of it. We're just trying to get everything in the right place. Um, a good thing to try and remember is the space between your eyes tends to be about the same as the space that is your, like going across your eye. So if you looked at a human face and you kind of measured how wide their eye is, that's gonna be about the same as the distance between them. So if you wanna get like really, really technical with it, you can even like measure how wide the eye is and compare it to the space between them. So your face might look a little bit odd if, for example, let me throw together one right now. If you do a very small eye, that's how you're going to start to get an alien look because the distance across the eye is much smaller than the distance between them. The same can, thing can happen if you draw the eyes a little bit too close as you can get this weird, almost cross-eyed look happening. Okay, so be careful of that. Try to avoid that if you can. Get that away. All right, noses. Noses are crazy. We like to think that it starts up by our eyes, like this is part of our nose. But when you actually look at a person's face, there's no line that happens here. Your nose is pretty smooth from the top of your nose into your cheek. They might have shadows, but that's not the same as drawing a line. 
The only place you're really going to draw lines for is right near the bottom by the nostrils. Now try to avoid making big circles for your nostrils because it's going to look like a pig. You have to think about it. Just like when we draw cylinders, we know that they're circular, but when you tilt it on its side, you get an oval shape. So the opening of your nose is kind of like a cylinder. So your nose is actually going to go kind of make a little mark about halfway between your eyes and your chin. And if you have to measure it, go ahead. It doesn't hurt to do that. You're going to have a little curve first. That's kind of like for where the point of your nose is. And a little oval on each side. Little flat oval. And then right near the bottom of each oval, give a little bit of a space and do a little curved line, kind of like parentheses that you'll use in like math or English class. Now you can bring those up a little bit towards the eyes, but you don't want to go too far. You don't want to draw all the way up. Now what you need to be careful of for this, even if you get the eyes looking right, if you make a super, super tiny nose, it might look a little bit odd. Your nose usually lines up kind of right below the corners of your eye. You can almost draw a line when you look at a person between the corner of their eye and the side of their nose, unless they've had a nose job and then they scrunch it. Then for the mouth, if you kind of go halfway between the nose and the chin, and just a tiny bit higher is about where the mouth is. And here's another thing that people will mess up on. If you make a small little mouth, it's gonna look very strange. If you do a big giant curve, that also looks strange. When we smile, the only part that curls up are the corners of your mouth. The center of your mouth stays pretty flat. If you were to smile, but cover up the corners of your mouth, it's just a flat line. I'm still smiling, but you can't tell because my lips are in a flat line. It's the corners that really show that little upward motion. So what you want to do is about as wide as your nose is going to be a mostly flat line. And then depending on if you want them to smile or if you want them to frown or if you just want them to be chill and relax, then you deal with the corners. So if you're just doing a chill face, you leave them kind of flat. If you're smiling, you turn the corners up. If they're frowning, you turn them down. So we're going to do a little bit of a smile. So I'm going to bring the corners of that up just a little bit. And then we'll add in some lips. Uh, don't go too crazy. Don't do that like you're drawing the top of a heart. Keep it very smooth. Think of it like hills, not mountains, hills and then the lower lip. And we can get into greater detail about all of these things later. There are so many things we can go into when learning how to draw eyes, like eyelashes, the little wrinkle that happens above your eye, how to do details inside the eye. That's a whole separate lesson. We're just doing basics for now. Um, but what I do want you to still add is some eyebrows. It should be just above the eye. Don't make them just a single line. Make them a little bit thicker than that. Um, most people don't have just a single line for their eyebrow eyebrows. We tend to have a little more there. Uh, next, we're going to do the ears, which a lot of people forget about the ears, or they'll just do like these tiny little things on the side of the head. Your ears are actually, if you're looking at it, the top of your ear should line up with your eye. Anybody who has ever worn glasses can tell you the same thing. Top of your ear should line up right with your eye. The bottom of your ear is actually going to line up closer to your nose or even your mouth, depending on how long your ear is, but it should at least be pretty far down. If you hold your pencil kind of flat like this, sit it right by your ear. So mine is right like practically the top of my lip. So my ear, we're just going to barely see it peeking out here. Going down, trying to line it up at least as low as my nose. Now, at this point, you may need to do a little bit of adjusting to the face. 
If you have made a very sharp point on your face, unless you're going for that kind of like cartoon style, you may need to do a little bit of rounding out. Um, at the very least, you don't want to have just a flat, I don't know if this doesn't quite make sense, but a flat curve. You want something that wavers a little bit more. So like showing where the cheeks come in and then kind of going around for the chin. This is kind of an, um, a bit of a round kind of chubby face, like me, <laughs> like my chin right there. Now, when you go to do the hair, your hair is usually going to be at least halfway, if not a little bit higher up your head to start. We call this the hairline. So everyone's got a spot whoa, where your hair starts, and then you have part on the top of your head here where you can still see hair. But everyone has this point where your hair and your skin kind of like separate. Now, it's not just a curve that goes around your head, even though you can say, okay, it does, it just goes, it goes around like that. If you really look at someone, push all my hair back so you can see in my little camera here. So I've got doo -doo -doo, almost a straight line across, and then it starts to come down toward my ears. So the part where it goes across is usually going to line up right around your eyes. So we're going to do very lightly again, kind of a line going across over the top of the eyes and then coming down towards the ear. Now, this is just so you know where your hair is starting from. Depending on what kind of hairstyle you have, it's gonna be different. We use my little guy here. Sneak another one in here. Do-do, do-do. Hairline, hairline, okay. If you have like your hair that is going back, like whether you have your hair kind of like swept up like a short hairstyle or you're having it go back into a ponytail or anything like that, you're going to start from this line. So if you've got like we'll do, I'll kind of do it a little strange. I'll do half and half. If you've just kind of got your hair swept back, you're going to kind of start from that line and make sure you're kind of going all around the head. So this is like you got your hair kind of like swept back. If you're doing it into more like a ponytail, your hair is going to go curve, like it's following around the edge of your head. And then depending on your ponytail, if you have it kind of low on your head, you won't see it. If you want like a high ponytail, you'll see the top of the ponytail kind of sticking out at the top. If you have like long hair, or like if you have bangs, let's say, your bangs will start along that line. So if you've got some bangs, those will form going across, and then you'll have the rest of your hair. So if you've got like bangs, but you've got longer hair, and then that will show on the sides. If you don't have bangs, which is what I'm going to do on my big one because I'm kind of drawing me at this point, you're going to start from the hairline. And even if you have it like my situation where it mostly covers my ears, that's going to come down. On one side and then my other side kind of dips down right near my eyebrow. I'm just going to keep following that around. Now, very important, you want to make sure that your hair goes past that line that you drew for the head. You have to think of it as when you draw that outline of the head shape, that's kind of like your skull and your hair has to be on top of it. So a lot of times students will just draw things directly on that line. You want to make sure it goes a little bit beyond, a little bit higher. And before I finish up the rest of the hair, I need to add the neck. It's fine if you want to have a floating head, but chances are you're going to want to attach these to a body at some point, so you need to add a neck. Just be careful not to do anything too skinny. When you're looking at a person and you're looking at where their neck is, you should be able to draw like an invisible line kind of coming right up. So my neck is pretty much right kind of like at the corners of my eyes, which might feel when you do it like it's too wide but our necks are not as skinny 
as you think they are. And then my quarantine hair, which flips up at the bottom. I gotta get a haircut. Gotta get out of quarantine so we can get our hair cut. Once it's safe, then I will. I have to pull it into ponytails in the meantime. Ta-da! There it is. And then once you've got all that, then you can go in and erase all your guidelines and all of that. Now, here's where you take this, our semi-realistic face, and I'm going to show you now how to break the rules because I know a lot of you are into like the animation and stuff like that. So same thing though, starting off. Do to do, do. Light outline on the head. Still going to split it up, but now I'm going to change it a little bit to try it, make it look a little more like a cartoon version of myself. So this is where you start to bend some of the rules. You don't want to completely break them. I'm still going to have the eyes on my center line, but now I'm going to make them a little bit bigger, a little more fun and animated looking. But even though I'm making them much bigger and they're a lot bigger on the head, I'm still watching my spacing between them. So even though they're large, I'm making sure that however wide they are is still kind of similar to how close they are to each other. Instead of doing a very, you know, realistic looking nose, I'm just going to add a little curved line and that's it for my nose. And then for my mouth, again, keeping in mind that your mouth should be roughly underneath your eyes. We can pull it a little bit further because it's cartoony. Still have some eyebrows. Make them a little bit thinner this time for that cartoon style. I'm going to sharpen the corners of the face a little bit because now that we're a cartoon, we can do that. But still keeping things in mind, like I'm still going to have pretty good size for my ears. Still going to keep in mind the idea of a hairline. But now we're going to have a little more fun with the hair. And when I tend to draw a cartoony style, my hair ends up being usually much bigger than the head itself. And there she is. So the last thing I'm going to show you, because this was requested in the club, in the meeting, was how to add um, a scarf or a hijab. Because not everybody shows off their hair. So not going to do the whole face, just getting the basics on there and the idea of the hairline. You still want to have an idea of where the person's hairline is because that's part of the importance of the scarf is to cover the hair. So you want to make sure that you know where the hair is so you can cover it. If you just start drawing fabric on top of the head and you don't think about where the hair would be, it could end up making your character look like they're a little bit bald if the fabric is too far. So the first part of the scarf starts right around next to where the ears would be, follows the hairline up, but then curves. Fabric can't make sudden corners, which is why you'll normally see the top of the scarf curving over, and then there'll be like a little extra strip of fabric that will cover the front of that hairline. You want to make sure that the top of the scarf is not only higher than the head, but higher than where the hair might be. So the top of the scarf might seem like it's a little bit high, but you have to remember that you have to cover the head and the hair as well. Wrap that around so it's going around the ears and kind of right toward the chin. Keep in mind where the neck is. So like if I had my eyes in there, it'd still line up kind of with my neck. And then I'm going to start doing these little kind of wrinkles.
for the rest of the fabric. What you want to do is start on one side and then you kind of wrap it around to the other side. And there you go. Ta da! So we got into some more things as well about how to do expressions, but I think we might save that for another time. If you guys are really interested in how to do, you know, very happy versus angry versus sad, let me know and I can do a different video for that. If you want to learn how to do faces that are not facing straight forward, that are turned to the side or even in profile, let me know that as well and we can work on doing that. But I think this will give you a pretty good start. I really encourage you to not only just make up faces and practice these skills, but to really look at someone. Take a picture of a family member, take a picture of yourself. Really look at those invisible lines that are in our faces and how things measure and what just half versus half versus half. So really looking at faces, whether they are cartoon faces or real people faces, either way it will help you to get better at drawing them. Look, look, look and use the, the things you're looking at to draw, okay? So let me know how you like this if you wanna know more and we'll take it from there. I will see you guys at the next meeting. Have a great day.